squared? Yes. Plus two? Okay. Do you know what the parent function is for this? Um, no, I do not. So it is one over x squared. And it's important to know that because one over x squared looks like this. And then all these things like do something to it, like move it up, down, left, right, flips, stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to look at it a few things at a time. So this, this number over here, right, whatever, whatever you're adding to this rational function, this is, this is a rational function. This is the horizontal asymptote. So it's y equals two. So that's, you, you, you maybe even heard this from your parents or people, they call this low hanging fruit. They're like, go for the easy stuff first. So the easy stuff here is like, there's a, an approach line here, y equals two. The x squared down here in the bottom, this tells you where the vertical asymptote is. Mm -hmm. So you essentially set it equal to zero, but x squared is equal to zero in only one place when x equals zero. So that's the that's the other kind of you know quick one that you can grab there, x equals zero. And then now it's a, now it's a question of like how accurate do you do you need to be? Because the correct answer here is something that looks like this and like this. But I'm gonna undo that. We can actually plot points if we need to. Do you know if we need to plot points? Um, I don't think so, but I probably would. Okay, let's do, uh, like I said, let's do, do some ones that make sense here. So we'll make a little table here, X and then F of X. So I'm gonna choose one. The reason I'm gonna choose one is because this, this dividing line, I should choose something to the right of it. So that's three over one squared plus two. Mm -hmm. Three over one squared is three plus two is five. So there's this point one, two, three, four, five. So there's your point. Now the problem is like, let's just say you choose two and now it's three over two squared plus two. It's three fourths plus two. So that's 2.75. It gets tough to graph at some point. Like yeah. it's kind of there. And, and the question is always, well, how many do you need? Well, I don't know, but we can, it's better than what I first showed you, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, the more points you do, the easier it is. Now you got to go to the other side. But if you remember the parent function, it's going to be symmetric. So you'll see you'll see the same values here. So this is three over parentheses negative one squared. Probably should have put one in parentheses squared and two in parentheses squared here. My recommendation is always put the negatives or whenever you're substituting in parentheses. So this also becomes five. And then negative two, similarly, three over negative two squared plus two becomes two point. Seven five. So you essentially get the same points on this side, and then you do something like that. And then also for these, she wants us to state the domain and range and find the x and y intercepts. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that because we we actually uh, we should have done some of these with other things. So the domain. The domain is associated with the vertical asymptotes. So in, in words, it's, it's everything but the vertical asymptote. But you, you're, you're doing it in set notation. Do you remember yeah. something like this? Oh, yeah. OK. And, and this is x. This, mean, this is always here. This x with the vertical bar, x. That's an E, element, Greek E, real numbers. And then you would say X cannot equal zero. Mm -hmm. The range is a, it's a little tougher. It, it has to do with this uh, horizontal asymptote. So do you see how it, it, it goes up to infinity? Mm -hmm. But how far down does it go? Well, it, it approaches this Y value, but it doesn't touch it. It, it just kind of like, approaches like an airplane coming down airplanes do hit the ground um but it, like this one it just kind of hovers above it so it's yeah. it's everything bigger than that horizontal asymptote so it has a similar format y such that this vertical bar means such that y is an element of the real numbers comma y greater than two mm -hmm. so something like that
Okay, now you said y-intercept. The y-intercept means that x is equal to zero. Can x equal zero in this graph? And the answer is no, because when you put zero in, you're dividing by zero. So it, it does not, it has no, it has none, no y-intercept. The x-intercept is when y equals zero. So for the, for the uh, y-intercept, you put x equals zero into the function. For y equals zero, you set the function equal to zero. So you set this original function, this three over x squared plus two equal to zero. And you solve for x. So this becomes three over x squared equals negative two. You cross multiply and you get three equals negative two x squared. You divide both sides by negative two. And then we try to take a square root of a negative number, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, th this has no solution or there are none. Now, if we go back to the graph, we, we could see that as well. Like the Y intercept means it has to cross the Y axis. The X intercept means it has to cross the X axis. And you can see it doesn't do either. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so we actually should do four next because it's more like the one we just did. Okay. Um, we should have, should have had us do two first, but this will work out okay. Just uh, there's an order here to doing them. That's easiest for learning and understanding. All right. Okay, uh, so again here, the first thing you're gonna do is figure out the uh, horizontal asymptote. And it's, it's this number right here. It's the negative two, it's y equals negative two. So there's your negative two there. Okay, the next one is, um, is this um, x, plus one squared. So that tells you the vertical asymptote. So you set that equal to zero. You set x plus one equal to zero. And that means x equals minus one. Hopefully this is just a repeat of some of the things you saw in class. Yeah. Now from, from two, from two, we can figure out the domain. So because the domain is the x values and it's everything but that restricted value. So it's against these, these curly braces, x vertical bar such that x, E element of the real numbers, comma, x cannot be negative one. It can be everything, anything but negative one. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Now the um, the y is a little bit tougher to do. If you know what this graph looks like, you can do it right away, but we'll probably need to make the table first to get the, uh, to get the answer here. So um, let's do that. Um, yes, I, I guess we'll do that first. So here's X and F of X. So let's try zero because zero is kind of to the right. Like there's two regions. There's this region to the right, this region to the left. When X is zero, it's three over zero plus one squared minus two, so it's three over one squared minus two. Three minus two is one, so that's an ordered pair there, zero, one. That also happens to be the y-intercept, so we, we, we lucked out on that. We got something uh, we didn't expect. Uh, let's do another point here. Let's do one, so it's three over one plus one squared minus two. So two, one plus one is two, two squared is four. So it's three fourths minus 2.75 minus two. So that's minus 1.25. So notice how like quickly it, it, it just becomes like a number that's hard to, to work with. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why you don't want to do too many of these, but that point is right there. So what that tells us, and again, that parent function makes it look like this. So we know it's going to have this kind of shape mm -hmm. to it. All 
All right, now by symmetry, it's actually gonna look the same on the other side, but we'll, we'll throw in a couple of values just to, just to verify that. So on the other side there, it's negative two. Sorry, this thing jumped down a little too far. So that's three over negative two plus one squared minus two. So that is uh, negative two plus one is negative one, but when you square it becomes one, three over one is three minus two is positive one. So again, just like that point there, and that's, that's that symmetry that helps you out. So negative two, one. And then similarly, when you put in negative three, and if you're wondering how I chose negative three again, we're just, just choosing a couple points left and right of the vertical asymptote. Um, you can do the work here, but it's gonna end up being minus 1.25. So uh, again, kind of down, down there. And then this has this shape here. So going back to the range, because we have the shape of this graph, we can see that that y is always above this value, this horizontal asymptote. Mm -hmm. So we can say for the range, I'll try and sneak that in up here, again, y such that y is an element of the real numbers. Just get in the habit of learning how to write. Um, um, In case you, you always write this part. Okay. All right. And then um, it's y greater than negative two. All right, uh, so uh, now we're gonna do x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So we actually already have the uh, y-intercept, but again, as a reminder, the, the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So if you, um, if you don't have, uh, if, you don't, if you didn't get it from the table, you can get it by just going back to that original function mm -hmm. and putting uh, zero in for x. So it's three over zero plus one squared minus two. Okay, so three minus two which is one, so you, you, it's an ordered pair, it's zero comma one. Mm -hmm. Now the, the x-intercepts, you can see it definitely crosses the x-axis from the graph there, somewhere between zero and one, and then somewhere between negative two and negative three, but we gotta do some work to get it. Uh, so that means that y equals zero, or you're setting zero equal to the original function. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to do this, you're gonna add two to both sides. So you get two equals three over parentheses x plus one squared. And then you're gonna cross multiply. So you get two times x plus one squared equals three. And then um, you divide by two. So you get x plus one squared equals three. Now, how do you undo a square root? Um, or how do you do a square? Square root, sorry, I gave you the answer. So it's x plus one, actually you don't need the parentheses. And this is this is what a lot of students uh, misremember here. It's plus or minus the square root, sorry, there's a two there, of three halves. Um, so, uh, okay, so then you just subtract one from both sides. All right, so this ends up being a negative one plus or minus the square root of three over two. So it's not a nice thing, but it's that that's what it is. And if you needed, if you had a calculator, um, you know, you you can do that. But that that should take care of um, the x-intercepts for that one. Okay, so let's go back and uh, and uh, look at the um, uh, next one that you sent here. I guess we can go to number two. Two is kind of the standard one that you would start with. It's got a different shape than the ones we've been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, 
maybe like this and this one's kind of the the uh, the original uh apparent function uh on that uh, so the, the original the parent function of one over x so you're seeing that it's got a graph that looks like this top right bottom left mm -hmm. so it's the same idea here this is the horizontal asymptote this gives you the vertical asymptote so there's a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative two so that's that's down here and a vertical asymptote at x equals three, so some, somewhere like that. So it should have this kind of shape where it's top right, bottom, bottom left. Okay, so uh, let's let's move move uh, to the because uh, the vertical asymptote gives us the domain. Again, the domain is one of those things we just have to get in the habit of writing this these symbols. Um, X vertical bar X element that's a Greek E that's a R with like another line, and then X cannot be positive three. That's your domain, and we'll come back to the range. So let's let's make a let's make a little table here. Let me, uh, let me grab the um, this is one over X minus three minus two. Let's make a table. And we're going to pick values just a little bit right and a little bit left of this. Okay, so the uh, let's do x and f of x. So we're going to pick like four. So this becomes one over four minus three minus two. So this is one minus two, which is negative one. Okay, so four negative one. There's that point. All right, and the problem the problem here is like let's just say you pick five. You get you start getting into these fractions. Five minus three minus two equals. And this becomes one half minus two, so it's minus one point five. It's already kind of down here. You actually need to get something like a little bit closer to this line. So you got to pick something like three point five, and it's okay that they're out of order here. So this is one over three point five minus three minus two. So this is one over point five which is really one over one half. One over one half is two, two minus two is, is zero. And that, that helps to give it kind of the shape that you're, you're, you're looking for. Now, unfortunately you can't use any symmetry here. So you just have to do the, uh, the values on the left side um, of this and um, you just got to be careful here that you get the right, um, you know, you don't, you don't overlap here. You're like, why did I do that already? So let's do two. So this is f of x here. So this is one over two minus three minus two. Two minus three is negative one. One over negative one is negative one. My, negative one minus two is minus three. So that gives us an ordered pair here. Two minus three. So see how it's there. Uh, again, like it's going to have this kind of shape to it. So again, it's up to you if you really want to do a bunch of points. I wouldn't, I would really probably ask your instructor because they may feel like you don't need to do any of this. And you can see out of everything we've done, this is what takes the most time is making the table. Okay, so let's move to the uh, range. So the range is always related to the horizontal asymptote. You always start with this y, y such that y element of the real numbers, comma. Um, notice it goes to positive infinity and it goes down to negative infinity. And it's everything in between except this horizontal asymptote. So that's what's a little bit different about this compared to the previous ones. The previous ones were, were either greater, well, they were both greater than a number. But once it's on both sides of this horizontal asymptote, it's y not equal to whatever that number is, which in this case is negative two, because it can be everything bigger and everything smaller. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. All right, now let's grab this function and let's do the two things that you said, hey, we also have to do these things. So the first one is the y-intercept. The y-intercept says it means x is equal to zero. So if you can, you put zero in for x. So this is one over zero minus three minus two. So that's negative one third. You can move that negative up minus two. If you want to be really fancy, you can make a common denominator here, six over three 
So this becomes negative seven over three. Your instructor is looking for an ordered pair, zero, negative seven thirds. The x-intercept, the x-intercept is when y equals zero. So you have to set the whole thing, the whole function f of x equal to zero. So in this case, it's zero equals one over x minus three minus two, and then you're solving, solve for x. So this is a little bit more work. Um, we actually did this already, uh, but we'll do it again here. So what I mean by that is we found it from the table. We'll add two to both sides. So two equals one over x minus three. Two times x minus three equals one. Divide both sides by two. So you have x minus three equals one half. And then you add three to both sides. X equals 3.5. And then if you want that as an ordered pair, it's 3.5 comma zero. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. All right, there's, uh, I'm giving you a lot of information. You know, you may find that we, we kind of went overboard on this, but we'll move to three now. Three is the first one that's in a different form than the others a little bit here. Um, so the, there's, there's really two forms here. There's y equals a over x minus h plus k. We did a bunch of those. And now it's this form, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. And there's, uh, do you remember when you saw, when you were looking at quadratic functions, there was the two forms, there was vertex form and standard form. Yes. So there's, there's like rules here, like some of the things work for the top one and some of the things work for the bottom one. Okay, so for the, for the horizontal asymptote, when it's in this format, you have to use the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Do you remember seeing that in class? Okay, so here it's the ratio of the numerator and denominator, minus five over one, because those are the leading coefficients. So that's just negative five. So you come down here, negative five, you draw horizontal line. For the vertical asymptote, you set the bottom equal to zero. So that's the same, x equals two. And now we can do the domain. You can always do the domain with the vertical asymptote. So the domain is, again, this nice curly brace x, x, such that x element of the real numbers, comma, x cannot equal two because two is where you divide by zero. So it's everything but that. All right now, um, the next thing we talked about doing is um, is uh, like putting some points in. Uh, another option, which works a little bit better in this format, is to actually find the uh, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So the, uh, the again the x-intercept, we're doing this out of order from the last one is, is to make. I'm sorry, the y-intercept is to set uh, set x equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So when x is zero, this becomes minus five times zero over zero minus two. So it becomes zero over negative two, which is zero. So it goes right through there. Now, this is really nice. Whenever it goes through zero, zero, it's both the x and the y intercept, okay? It's not enough to graph it. So unfortunately, we're still gonna have to make that table, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's better. It's better than, um, having to make a huge table. So like this point, uh, maybe one is a good value to try and then maybe negative one. So we'll try those two. We're gonna go left of it this time. So if you see the function there, it's minus five times one over one minus two, negative five over negative one is five. So the one five, and then we'll put in negative one. So it's negative five times negative one over negative one minus two, five over negative three, 
negative five thirds. That one's a little bit harder to figure out, but we'll just roughly approximate it. Um, sorry, lost track here what I was doing. So that's around, it's around there. Yeah. So this has this shape to it. And then because it's, there's no squares in it, it's gonna have this shape down here, but let's just pick three because three is to the right of it. So you wanna pick points to the left and the right of the vertical asymptote. So when X is three, you have negative five times three over three minus two. So notice that that is a negative 15 over one. So I can't even graph that point, but it you know looks something like that down there. May I move on to five? Maybe you're muted. Oh, yeah, you can move on. To five. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome to mute yourself or not. I, but, uh, um, no, sometimes my microphone just stops working. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had so many issues, but, um, all right, so this one's like the previous one. Um, do you want to try and do any of this on your own, or do you want me to continue working through this? Yeah, I could. I could do this one. Okay, try this one. Um, take a couple minutes, and then I'll just uh, I'll check back and start working through it as well uh, for you. Actually, we did not do the uh, range on this one. Uh, the range is everything but this y value. So it's that y such that y is an element of the real numbers y not equal to negative five. Yeah. Okay. This one is really similar. So a lot of the same stuff in there. I'm just going to jump in here a little bit and just write some things, but keep working if you're not done, please.
So this one's slightly different in that the, um, the x-intercept, you, you do set y equal to zero, but it's when this form, in this form, you just set the numerator equal to zero because zero over anything is, is zero unless the bottom zero. So it's a, sl it's a slight shortcut, but you just set six x plus one equal to zero. And that means that x equals negative one. Six. This one doesn't work out real nicely. That's why, again, I kind of wonder if maybe your instructor meant for you to do this with, uh, you know, software. I, I don't know, but this this has this kind of shape to it. Um. So for the y-intercept, we just don't use the denominator. When it's in this format. Okay. This this format. When it's in the something minus two, then it's different. I'm sorry. Okay. There's it's like two forks. It's a branch. You know. Um, different rules. Okay, and then uh, you can do the the domain. I'm sorry, you can do the range after you do the y, the horizontal asymptote if you know what the graph looks like. Let me know when I can move on to six. Oh, you can move on. Great. So six is the first non-graphical one. Uh, sometimes they even just give you, um, they, you know, they, they emphasize more just like, what is what are the characteristics and don't actually graph it. Um, this one is different than all the others. Um, there's this step where you have to factor uh, the numerator and the denominator potentially uh, but the numerator factors into the following x plus 3x minus 1 over x plus 4. If there's a, if, if you're not sure how I did that, let me know. We can go through that. But what, what it is is like sometimes certain things are more easily distinguishable depending on the format that it's in. So like in this factored format, there's some things that are easier to see. Um, the first one that we're going to look at is the, uh, is the horizontal asymptote. This one does not have one. And you might say, well, hey, Matthew, isn't it kind of like the last one? It's different because the degree of the numerator is two. Mm -hmm. And the, num I'm sorry, uh, numerator is two, denominator is one. So when, and there's like three cases, when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there's no horizontal asymptote. Instead, there's a slant asymptote. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just pretend I didn't say that because it'll it'll come up in the next day or two and it'll be clear. The vertical asymptote is when the denominator equals zero. So you said x plus four equal to zero. That's the same. Great. So x equals minus four. So the answer to this question is what I've boxed in. That is the only thing that there is. Unless you think your instructor is asking about a slant asymptote. Any idea about that? Yeah, she probably might ask. Okay, and that makes sense because there's a lot of room here. The way you find a slant asymptote is you use long division. Mm -hmm. Ugh, right? <laughs> so I don't like it either. I, I mean, I'm like not like I'm excited here for this. X squared plus two X minus three goes inside the house. X plus four goes outside the house. Um, that's the terminology used back in fourth grade when you maybe learn this dividing numbers. Um, just as a reminder, you're trying to clear each of these terms. So you ask the question, you say, what do I need to multiply x by to get x squared? And the answer is x. And then you multiply each of these by x. So you get x squared plus 4x. This is the small little wrinkle is you have to subtract both terms. So it's x squared minus x squared, 2x minus 4x. Sometimes students forget to distribute the negative to both, but you're really subtracting both. Um, do something to make that super clear. Sometimes people just change the sign of each one. So you end up getting negative 2x, and then you bring this down minus 3, and then you, you, you rinse and repeat. 
what do you need to multiply x by to get negative 2x? Well, the answer is negative 2. Multiply, so you get negative 2x minus 8. And again, then you subtract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you actually can stop here, but we need to keep going here just, just, just to carry this through because our, our answer is this right here. Negative 2x minus minus 2x is 0. Negative 3 minus minus 8 is 5. This is your remainder. This is your quotient. And this is your divisor. And the format is quotient plus remainder over divisor. Um, you don't care about that. This is the slant asymptote right here. This x minus 2, this y equals x minus 2. And what it is, I, I think it's more, it's, it's better to see visually. What it is, is it's this like, oops, that was not a good good thing to graph. Um, it's this, uh, it's this line that the, that the curve end, ends up approaching. So it ends up like Ving. Well, that's, that's not a good picture. Um, sorry, let me make a better picture here. Um, it, it, you end up having this like Ving of the graph um, based on, on that. So anyway, the, the, the important thing for you to remember is that when you have a degree of your numerator, which is larger than your denominator, you're going to do you're going to do long division, and your long division, whatever you have at the top here, that's your slant asymptote. So the so the uh, I'll box this in, but that's your other part of the answer. Okay, uh, are we going to go on to seven and eight or other things? Um, oh, for number six, also, what if there, like, what if, like, the x squared plus 2x minus 3 was on the bottom? What would be the vertical? Would it be x minus 3 and x plus 1? There would be two of them. It would be, uh, it would be where this was x plus 3 is 0, which is at negative 3, and x minus 1 equals 0, which is at 1. Oh, okay. And that is the more common question that you would see. It ends up having, like, this kind of neat thing where you have an asymptote, 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 and you get all this kind of cool stuff that can happen, like math cool stuff where you get snakes or some U-shaped stuff, lots of really interesting things. Maybe that's covered upcoming, or maybe you guys skip that all together in this class. Okay, should we look at seven or is it clear? Yeah, can we go over seven and eight? I think I did that right. I'm looking at your work first before I comment. Um, um, let me just, sorry, I should snip this into the screen. All right. Stop. No, 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 that's in the wrong place. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. You have this given equation. And what I see that you did here is you said, I need to factor this. It's different squares. That's perfect. Um, then, then I think what I interpret this to mean is you said, well, this one has a 3x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply it by 3x minus 2, which is what you did here. And this one is a 3x minus 2. So I need a 3x plus 2. So I put that here. Then you distribute, distribute, and you solve for x. And you're very happy. OK, so this is totally correct. but. There's a, there's a small little thing that might happen. The very first thing you're supposed to do is figure out the domain of this problem. And you set each of the bottoms equal to 0. So 3x plus 2 equals 0. 3x minus 2 equals 0. So this is x equals negative 2 thirds. And this is x equals 2 thirds. So your domain is x such that x is an element of the real numbers, comma. x cannot be negative 2 thirds or 2 thirds. Now, I don't know if this will matter in a, in a test or exam, but let's just say your answer was two thirds. Would it be correct? 
And the answer is no, because it's not in the domain. So you're supposed to do this first and then check your answer. You're supposed to check it with the domain. But most students don't do this. Most of the time it doesn't matter, but it could. Like there could be the kind of question where it, it does matter. And uh, that, that's what I would be worried about here um, for you. So that's my cautionary tale, I guess. Um, I'm looking at the other one here. The other one looks fine, but it's the same thing. So for like for number eight, you would want to say that X cannot be two and X cannot be negative seven, but your work is perfect. I mean, it seemed like you really got these down. Okay, um, what else would you like to look at tonight? Get a packet of um, everything that's like seven and eight. So we can just review that. Let's see. Say that one more time. You'd like some more examples, like seven and eight? Yeah, I did a um, a worksheet, but I just need to like review it. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, these actually take quite a bit of time to solve, but. Uh, we, we should be able to get through a few of them. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, I got one here. Um, I'm, hopefully you haven't already done these because there's only a few searches that come up on the internet here. All right, so this is maybe a little bit more simple or trivial than the one you just did. Uh, but I'll point out again that you have to set the bottom equal to zero. You can, you can set them all equal to zero, but there's some duplication there. So you really just need to set the one that's like the, the least common or the, the common divisor of them all. Mm -hmm. So here you factor out an X, you get X plus five equals zero. So either X equals zero or X equals negative five. So what that means is X cannot be zero or negative five. And I, you might get one on the whole test like that. So just, just keep that in mind. And what you know now is like, oh, this one is missing an X. This one's not missing anything. And this one's not missing anything. So all I got to do is multiply this one by X. So it's X minus. Now, there's nothing in here, but really you're negating everything. So it's X minus one equals four. You can very quickly um, solve this for five. Okay. And it's not negative five, so you're okay. So that's just, that's just a little wrinkle here. So let's Let's pull up one that's like more, you're more likely to get here. Let me actually see if I can find one that's got one of these, uh, none of these are exceptions, but that's okay. Let's do, um, you haven't done this worksheet before, is that right? This is, this is new? Yeah, this is new. Okay. All right, so I'll have you try this one, please, on your own. And uh, I'll just stand by here. You can let me know when you got the, the final answer for that, please. I got 
n equals eight. N equals eight? Yes. Yes, that's completely correct. Okay, let me see if I can find one more here that actually has this exception so that you can see that in progress. Um, How are you doing in your class grade wise and are you happy with your grade? Um, it's going up. I've been doing, I did really well in the past two tests. Okay. Yeah. How does math rank for you as your favorite subject or least favorite subject? Um, I feel like this year it's like kind of towards the bottom. <laughs> okay. I don't know, my teacher like, my whole class agrees like my teacher just doesn't like explain things very well right so it's just like difficult because she like gives us like the notes and then she gives us this worksheet and then we're all kind of confused but all right last one here um go ahead and give this one a try okay. this one I'll, I'll say that you really should put that negative with 18 before you uh before you do anything else but I got x equals negative nine. Okay, and that would be correct, but what is x not supposed to be equal to based on the domain? Nine and negative nine. Right, so when you get down here and you're you know, like, yeah, I did all, all right, I feel really good, you've got to compare back to this. Okay. So it would be no solution? There'd be no solution, yeah. So I don't know what your instructor would do in that case, but you... Uh, um, could be marked off for that. So just keep that in mind. Well, that takes us to the end of our lesson for today. Thanks so much for scheduling. I'll send you the uh, notes and the screen recording out shortly, and I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great night. Bye now.